Hello, my name is Boris Weissman. I'm a co-founder of a Silicon Valley startup called Datrium. I have 20 years of experience in virtualization. Before Datrium, uh, mostly at VMware, where I was a principal engineer. This talk about protecting your private data clouds. So this is an example of the legacy infrastructure where backup was a separate silo. Uh, you have your primary storage array, your backup array, your backup software that ties it all together. Your backup array is designed to provide low latency, high IOPS um, storage uh, with data availability in mind. Your backup array is a specialized custom-built data appliance that is designed for data reduction, uh, designed for data protection, designed for high uh, in data ingest, and uh, overall cost efficiency. The backup software is normally provided by third-party vendors, uh, takes backup once a day, uh, because it's often insufficient, IT administrators are often also forced to deploy complicated systems of mirroring based on storage array LANs. Uh, that creates even more complexity. Uh, tape is still used for off-site backup and for um, extended archiving. And finally, when uh, optimization appliances are deployed to reduce traffic of a slower van by uh, compressing and du deduplicating traffic. So this is all very complex. It requires gear uh, and products from three to four vendors. Managing it requires several specialized administrators trained in four to five different consoles. And because of this complexity, a study by Dell EMC actually concluded that enterprises that use uh, three or more vendors to put together their data protection generally lose three times as much data as businesses that uh, unify data protection around a single vendor. So this is the past. What about the future? And uh, uh, as far as the future goes, so a solution for the private cloud uh, designed for it should provide several important capabilities for storage. It should provide low latency, high performance uh, primary storage. It should provide low cost, uh, low cost secondary storage with rich uh, data management capabilities that would make uh, third party backup software unnecessary. It should reduce RPO and, RT and uh, RTO from days to uh, minutes, potentially seconds. Uh, it should unif unify all the management into a single management console to make it possible for a single uh, virtualization cloud administrator to administer all the needs of the private cloud, from compute to primary to backup storage. And finally, it should also enable to tap into the elasticity of public clouds uh, to use public clouds for extended archiving of your, of your backups instead of using tape. Um, so Datrium DBX is a first product in this um, next generation architecture that provides all of these capabilities uh, in a single product. What Datrium DBX is, um, so it's a system composed of two kinds of stackable nodes, compute nodes and data nodes. Compute nodes are commodity x86 appliances, pretty much any server that satisfies Datrium HCL could serve as a compute node with the help of DBX, uh, Datrium DBX software. Alternatively, a customer can obtain, uh, can procure compute nodes from Datrium for a turnkey solution. Data nodes are dense storage appliances, also x86 based. Um, they are fully redundant and uh, with all components still replaceable. Now, the true value proposition comes from Datrium uh, software-defined storage controller, which ties all these components together and provides you a single, main, a single way of managing everything, including the application to the cloud for extended backup. So this slide shows uh, how we simplify the legacy architecture. On the left here, well, actually, you're right here, you have a legacy architecture that is composed of a primary storage array, a backup array, uh, x86 servers run in virtualization, vSphere software, or perhaps KVM, um, and backup servers that only execute backup software. On the right, we have a simplified Datrium system. So as you can see, a lot of components are replicated in the legacy architecture and could be optimized uh, out. It's true for both hardware and software. Um, so what Datrium does, it takes, for example, CPU and flash which is present both in primary array and now even in secondary array and on the servers, consolidates it all in our compute nodes 
which executes VMs, but also allocate a slice of the resources for I.O. processing. Secondly, we take these drives from the primary array and backup array and consolidate them all in, the back in our um, data node. So all our drives are in the data nodes that can scale out. Uh, data nodes also uh, contain backup catalog, so that eliminates the need to buy third-party backup software. And the last but not the least, uh, primary array and secondary array, they all have complex file systems designed with different goals in mind. And of course, we also have backup software running uh, elsewhere. So we consolidate that all into a single system that executes on our computer and, uh, data nodes uh, and eliminates a third party software need. So this is a different example of convergence at hyperconvergence, but what if you're already hyperconverged? Well, in this example, the starting point is in fact a hyperconverged cluster. So at the top, you have an HCI scale out cluster that already converges your compute uh, with your primary storage. So there is no more storage array network, no more storage array. At the bottom, you have an example of a hyperconverged backup cluster that takes your backup appliance like data domain and your backup software and converges it together. So that helps a lot. Complexity is reduced, but you still end up with two separate clusters to manage using two different management consoles. So you have to train your IT admins to do that. Also, you end up with a problem of uh, moving data back and forth for backup and recovery between these two arrays. And as you can see, there is also a lot of duplication of hardware and software. So we do the same thing. We take a CPU in flash from the two clusters, consolidate them into our compute nodes. We take drives from both clusters, consolidate in our data nodes, along with backup catalog. And perhaps most importantly, as you can see, hyperconverged uh, systems have two different scale out file system built. And these are very complicated systems, they're expensive to build, expensive to buy. We consolidate them all into a single scale out file system that serves both primary and secondary storage. Okay, so what makes it all possible is our scale out software defined storage controller. And what it is, at the heart of it is a distributed log structured file system. And we made this design choice in the very early, in the beginning of the company, because we uh, had to find an architecture suitable for running both primary and backup loads. And uh, the end result is we can achieve up to 18 millions of IOPS, and this is actually faster than any old flash array I'm aware of. And just to point out, this is with uh, spinning disks. So the data nodes have spinning disks, no flash. At the same time, we can uh, scale our ingest straight to 13 gigabytes a second, which actually rivals the performance of custom-built uh, backup appliances. Highly unusual, we can do it both because of the log structured file system, scale out file system. Uh, we have data, always on data reduction. All these incredible numbers uh, were, were uh, collected while having data reduction on. In fact, we have no way of disabling data reduction. You always get data reduction for both your flash and your disk. You get compression, you get the duplication, and you get erasure coding. And of course, we have unprecedented level of security that I'll spend a few minutes a little bit later. Now, on the data management side, we have both data management at scale and we have granular data management. By at scale, I mean we can manage millions of snapshots. Granular data management involves uh, taking snapshots, recovery at the both VM, container level, even file level, replicating all these entities. Uh, the backup catalog is integrated into our system, no need for backup software. And of course, we have native uh, forever incremental uh, elastic replication, uh, which makes it possible to replicate your backups to remote sites and to the public cloud. To take a, uh, a little bit deeper look at our data management services, virtual machines and containers are managed in terms of protection groups. Uh, an administrator specifies uh, patterns to, uh, for automatic inclusion of containers and virtual machine into protection groups. So when a VM or a container, when they're created, if they satisfy pattern rules, they automatically join protection groups and become protected. Uh, we can manage millions of snapshots overall. A protection group could have thousands of virtual machines or containers. 
And we can snapshot these protection groups with thousands of virtual machines or containers, potentially executing on 128 nodes atomically for, to obtain a crash consistent snap of the entire protection group. And we, we also support application level consistency with our VSS, native VSS provider for Windows. Our Elastic replication is forever incremental. It retains full data reduction, compression, deduplication against destination. Uh, we support variety of topologies from one to many to many to one, uh, point to point to bidirectional to true mesh. Uh, we support network shaping to optimize your network bills and encryption. Uh, our blanket, speaking of encryption, our blanket encryption is actually revolutionary in that it encrypts data immediately as it's produced on the compute nodes. So data is always encrypted. It's encrypted on the wire and it, it's encrypted at rest. We don't use any hardware, it's software-based encryption and our encryption capabilities scale as you add nodes to the cluster. And finally, uh, we are launching a technical preview of our uh, extended archiving to the public cloud at this VM world to be available next quarter. Uh, so what it is, uh, basically we extend our native incremental replication to AWS for extended archiving. To make this possible, we ported our software-defined storage controller to AWS by replacing the bottom of our file system with S3, uh, which is very cost-effective. So it's 2017, the message I'm trying to get across, various forms of conversions are available to you. You no longer need to buy a primary array and a secondary array and backup software and separate servers from four or five different vendors and learn how to operate it. Uh, nor do you need to buy a primary hyper-converged cluster and a secondary cluster and learn how to operate it all. You can do it all with Datrium solution, single architecture, many deployments possible, one solution, one unified management console. Thank you very much for your time. It's a short talk. Thank you.